Hello butterflies, hello, hello. Welcome to Monique's Tarot. How are you butterflies? I hope all is going well on your end today. To get things started here, let's just burn a bit of Palo Santo. Welcoming in those messages from the spiritual guides and also clearing out that energy that no longer serves us. As always, butterflies, thank you all so, so much for your likes, subscribes, your donations via Substack and Medium, Quora, all the good spaces, wherever you connect with me, YouTube. Thank you for the podcast listeners for Monique's Tarot. We had our biggest week last week. <laughs> so thank you for those of you that um, came in by the hundreds <laughs> listening in via Monique's Tarot. So, so appreciate you. Um, wherever you are connecting again with the butterfly family thank you all so so much so uh, this week we're preparing for the full moon in Virgo taking place March 7th so before we get into a message from the spiritual guides let's talk a little bit about the energy we can expect from a full moon in Virgo so this is a very active full moon in Virgo and let me just say this um, before even getting into anything about the moon make sure you all are taking time for yourself butterflies there are some definitely deep emotional transits that are happening before the full moon leading up to i know for myself i've had to take some time this week to really process that allow yourself to have those days where you just let everything out <laughs> you know those ugly cry days those days where you just kind of let it all come out of your body that is your spirit's way of really releasing it and acknowledging it and acknowledging what you're maybe dissatisfied with and where you want to grow so allow that to happen before we get into the full moon in virgo again taking place on march 7th but talking specifically about the full moon things you can expect from a full moon in virgo within tarot virgo energy is represented by the hermit card so it goes inward it's that process of kind of taking time with yourself spending and loving all those good things that you bring with virgo being an earth sign there's always this thought of stability that virgos have so think about resources and finances that you have at this time with this specifically being a full moon it's a time of harvest so what seeds did you plant at the previous new moon that now you can bring into fruition? What are those big dreams that you have for yourself? And Virgo really wants to go in and take some time. But with this full moon, it kind of is like you're showing off what you've done <laughs> internally. You're kind of stepping out just a little bit with the full moon, but staying true to that inner Virgo-ness. Virgo is also ruled by the planet of Mercury. So think about language, think through how you're actually connecting with people, and also consider how your verbal or nonverbal cues are coming off to people. Virgos, of course, are very organized. That's kind of a trait that they're known for. So there's a certain brilliance that comes with that Mercurian energy and also reason. So make sure that you're allowing yourself to spend some time alone allow yourself to go into those thoughts but also acknowledge if you're maybe taking on too much this full moon in virgo is a great time to kind of acknowledge your boundaries like celebrating those boundaries like you're glad that you step back from this or you're glad that you step back from that make sure that you're allowing yourself to do that because with this harvest energy Respecting true boundaries with a full moon in Virgo, it allows you to have greater stability within your life. Virgo is also a mutable sign, so very easygoing, um, very relaxed energy. And Virgo is number six within the tarot deck. So there's a lot of loyalty, responsibility that comes with sixes. If you think about sixes within tarot, they're usually about celebration or some type of transition. So acknowledge and expect the unexpected with a lot of that loyalty and also domestic responsibility, those grounding traits that Virgo and earth signs have. 
Also, Virgo is ruled by the sixth house. So this is about your routines, your duties. Think about your health care. Also, like what is your service that you want to bring to others? And with this kind of strength and your stability, really bring that to the forefront in all of your conversations, your employment. Virgos are really organized and hard workers. <laughs> so bring that out, allow yourself to go there and allow yourself to have that ability to really truly connect with others. Now let's talk about these transits <laughs> because there are so many transits that are happening. Around one o'clock in the morning, uh, the moon will be in conjunct with Jupiter. So this is a time to really monitor your optimism. Jupiter rules all of that optimistic attitude, you know, how you want to expand, how you want to grow, even some abundant luck. With it being in conjunct, there's a little bit more disharmony. But at 1 a.m., you either could be working in the late night hours or this is more likely to affect your dreams. So just think through how your optimism maybe is taking a little bit of a hit. Just be mindful of it. But more importantly, ask yourself how you'd like to adjust into a better frame with that Virgo energy. At 5.51 a.m., the moon will then train Uranus. So this is a great time to kind of kick the habit. Like if there's anything that maybe you want to wake up early and go to the gym, or maybe you wanted to get back on a health regimen or watching how you're talking, this is a great time to kick the habit of those things that you want to let go and you want to get rid of in your life. At 7.40 a.m., the moon opposite, goes into opposition with the sun. And so this is a great time to ask yourself, like, what are you providing and where's your pride? That sun energy is all about authority and ego. So allow yourself to kind of think through that. You'll have some great ease with it. And so with it being right in the morning, this will be a great time to have some pride here. Um, but also make sure that you're actually looking at it properly. Again, the moon is in opposition with the sun. So you might feel just a little bit separated from it, but the guides are just encouraging you to see the, the full possibility, the full possibility of your pride there. At 11.53 a.m., the moon will be in conjunct with Venus. So again, you might ask yourself some questions here like, are you as interested in them as you think they are? Are you having all of your sexual needs met? Are you having all of those connected points met with your partnerships and love? This is a great time to really acknowledge that and think through that. The moon does square Mars at 6.06 p.m. So this is a time where you might need to work through um, some competitive things. Like if you're out with friends at a dinner, you might notice people are a little bit more competitive <laughs> or a little bit more um, comparing or maybe a little bit judgmental. Acknowledge that and think about what you're doing in the evening. Uh, of course, there's that time for ceremony with the full moon in Virgo, but you might find yourself out maybe celebrating something or with other spirits and souls. It's important to just know that there's an, an intense energy <laughs> of competition in the evening. And then um, at 11.39 p.m., which is the last transit of the day, the moon will be in opposition with Neptune. So this is where your dreams are really going to start to teach you how to reconnect and also think about your reality. What are some of the things that maybe don't align with your reality? With that opposition energy, it's a separation point to really acknowledge what's needed for you, where you actually need to be going. So think through that in the evening and allow yourself to drift off with the full moon energy with a celebration time of new harvest. With that, butterflies, now that we know a little bit more about the full moon and Virgo energy, let's get into a reading from the spiritual guides.
calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Virgo. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Virgo. Okay, butterflies. So for the full moon in Virgo here, we have a beautiful background of yellow flowers. Yellow flowers always connecting with that solar plexus. So that willpower area of the body, being able to have the courage to move forward. And then we have a beautiful black butterfly with white wings, uh, white tips in between kind of a flex coming through but also there's these red tips it's like they're blue and red at the same time what's interesting that's actually standing out to me is kind of like there's this butterfly but it looks almost like there's like a, a face here like um like i'm actually getting an ancestor here like a mothering figure of the past kind of acknowledging or this could even be for some of you like if some of you have not talked to a particular family member, female, friend of the past, it's like you're flying into this new area where you're kind of like above the clouds in a way with these flowers, like you're flying to your destination. Um, you're flying west, uh, which could symbolize like you're flying towards something that needs to either close or you're flying towards something that you're, um, far away from the closing point of it but you're taking your time to get there like you're moving though you're moving like you're flying there and i'm seeing here like there are some people that want to be acknowledged like they want to be able to connect with you but it's like you're in the your own path in your own world that's happening here so the butterfly affirmation reads life is good to me life is good to me yeah it's interesting to have that visual here of like if you're traveling through and you're traveling to a new destination and then there are other people here for some of you it's like other people have helped you to get to this point of where you are now and then for some it's like you're flying past maybe some discord that was happening here with others of the past is what i'm getting really powerful visuals but life is good to me life is good to me is what that butterfly affirmation reads here let's pull in some wild offering oracles calling in wild offering oracles for the full moon in virgo Okay, so your wild offering oracle reads trust. It says, when love is invited to take over, right actions arise at the right time. Allow me, dear divine, to wait patiently until the timing is right. Let me rest in the unknown until a clear path is shown. Yeah, it's like there's this energy of um, searching and also this, this path though, there's just a strong acknowledgement to make sure you're carrying the people that come with you through. Like you can't leave the people behind that got you to this point. But the guides are asking you to trust the process. Again, it says, when love is invited to take over, right actions arise at the right time. Allow me, dear divine, to wait patiently until the timing is right. Let me rest in the unknown until a clear path is shown. Yeah, it's um, it's almost like there are some like some for some of you, this may be specific to some of you. But like if you know friends that are like those fast movers, I'm getting that energy where it's like if you're not happy, you're going to just keep moving. <laughs> it's like the guides want you to do that. But they also want to make sure that you're just not moving because you're scared of the reality of what is like. You need to make sure that you spend some time in the uncomfortable pieces and it's like some people are saying hey like 
I see you, like I wanna go with you, but I think there's a part of uh, some of you that know, like not everybody can come with you on this next path. Like you're trying to really trust the unknown and that's requiring some of you to kind of take this leap of faith and start to travel and start to move and um, yeah, there's just this energy of not everyone can come, but some people do need to be acknowledged. They they want to talk with you uh, so that you're not just doing it alone. You're not just traveling blind with all this willpower. Um, so yeah, a combination of trust from the spiritual guides and also need to connect with others here. Bring in some Starlight Oracle energies. I'm getting this visual of beds, uh, specifically like a hospital bedroom that they don't necessarily have. Um, it's not as popular because normally there are screens, but I'm getting like this visual of like multiple beds or um, in a room. It could be a hospital, but it also uh, is giving this feeling of like an orphanage, like um, like 10 beds that are lined up next to each other. And I am getting this feeling of youth, but I'm also getting this feeling of age, like people are aging in these beds that are lined up next to each other, like multiple beds uh, that are just there. Um, and it is during the day. I'm just gonna hold on to that, that visual there. Okay, so the Starlight Oracle that came out is Soul Rooms, and I felt a chill with that, with just that visual. So Soul Rooms here, uh, the number top is 22. So 22 translates to four. That's all about like structures and foundations. And on this card of Soul Rooms, you can see that there's um, there are five different rooms or windows um, here, kind of like a, a half moon a kind of crescent round and flat bottom window like arched at the top and on the first window there's a moon a crescent moon face backward with a star in it the central window has three stars there's an eye that's looking out to the right there's also an orb here of energy kind of like those scientific orbs um, in the fourth window and then there's stairs here what i'm gathering through here is like with the moon being reversed, it's like going deep into your emotions. It's always that um, intellectual energy that the moon brings in, like your instincts, the unconscious mind, uh, the natural rhythms of your body. And it's like for some of you, the guides are asking you to kind of flip your emotions. Like whatever you do, you're supposed to maybe do a little bit more of the opposite right now to kind of twist into the space that they're trying to get you into. There is great possibility that's coming in here, but also like some of you are wide eyed for this opportunity. You're looking out, you're looking into what can happen and where things can go. But there's a need to make sure you're also working through it like a chemist here, working through that possibility, putting some energy in. Yeah, there's just this, there's three, um, souls here like three bodies here three people um also on this card in between the scientific room and also the stair room and that energy that came through of just like there are people that are meant to walk with you through this door it's like you're starting to see where you want to go you've been doing some work and emotionally some of you are being called to flip what you normally would do um to see this possibility here. With soul rooms here, it reads, we are unpacking teachings from your soul rooms. Take a moment to be still now during these activations. I'll read that again. We are unpacking teachings from your soul rooms. Take a moment to be still now 
during these activations. So yeah, this is bringing in that Virgo energy. Again, the harvest, but also to spend some time with yourself to define what is it that you need to trust your spiritual guides with here? What is it that you need to do so that you can maintain that gumption and that willpower, but also make sure you're bringing the right people with you as you start to kind of get out of those old habits, kick those old habits like we talked about with some of the transitions. Yeah. Okay. And I'm feeling called just to bring in one more elemental oracle here before we get into your base tarot. Calling in elemental oracle energies for the full moon in Virgo. Okay, so the elemental oracle that came out, that just really flew out, um, is this beautiful, beautiful eye. And actually, as I'm looking here, I've never noticed the butterflies that are actually on this eye. It reads soul and passion, soul and passion. Imaginary insights is also what's coming out. The imaginary insights that some of you have. It's like these symbols almost represent Neptune here. Um, some, some dreams that you've had here are starting to, to shed through. Like this person is, uh, I, I see the tears here. Like this person is crying. Like some of you are so passionate that you're crying. There's this view. You can actually see the world in this eye. Hope you all can see that you can actually see the world in this eye and it's like some of you have such bold views for the world and i'm also getting um there's an event that's happening here or coming up like there's a world event that's happening that's coming through there's an environmental pull here like this is a beyond personal high collective reading there's a um there's an energy that's coming through um for the environment there's gonna be a, a shift that's getting ready to happen I, I think there's a preparation that the world needs to take here there's something here about um dry destitute lands like unexpectedly like the water almost is going to be drained here from certain areas maybe uh areas that were maybe more tropical in some ways um and i can see that some of this is um like displacing people from wooded areas uh is what's coming through here beyond that message there i am seeing for some of you that the passion that you have, the energy that you have here is bringing in such joy that you are, um, it's almost like you're, there are tears of joy that are happening for you personally. But I can also see that there's a need to make sure that the collective is acknowledging the things that are happening around the world, like not to be so centered in your joy that you miss all these beautiful things because there's like different transformation points that are happening as people start to plant their passions. Like there's going to start to be a more connected energy of people like crying out of wanting better things for the world here. And it's actually starting to transform what you engage in and what you do. The number atop here is 14, which again translates to five. And that's all about freedom and travel and expression. So for some of you, especially those that are um, feeling called to like go out and do this work um, with the environment, you may find yourself traveling and it's almost like you're seeing different people across the world. Like you're starting to acknowledge the people across the world and um, you're going to the next here. It's like this willpower and gumption and you're going to the next. 
That's a very specific message for someone who's extremely passionate about the environment, but it's definitely going to affect the collective. But I'm seeing here before we get into any base tarot that the guides are calling you to trust what they're bringing you into and you need to be mindful about who you actually bring with you. That's powerful butterflies. Really powerful. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Virgo. Calling in messages from the spiritual guides for the full moon in Virgo. Wow, this energy is beautiful, butterflies. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's get into this energy before we get in some clarifiers. Okay, so within your elevation of spirit here, I'm seeing the Ten of Cups. I'm seeing the Ace of Wands within healing. I'm seeing the Four of Swords reversed within work and business endeavors, the two of wands within your personal life, and also the world card within unexpected surprises, which was also supported by the hermit. So what I'm noticing here within your elevation of spirit, many of you are moving into this time of great family abundance. There's a deep connection with those members that you love, those members of your family that acknowledge you. You're coming into this time of great emotional fulfillment. This could also be a connection to community. So being able to support and acknowledge the people within community that need your help, that need your guidance, that need to allow you you to help and give that energy of connection that you haven't maybe experienced in some time, especially as you're elevating to these new levels. It's beautiful to see that there are so many people around you that acknowledge your cup, that acknowledge your hope and your star energy here with this cup at the top. Within your healing, I am seeing the Ace of Wands. So right away, I did get this very loving energy that came from this, this card. So for some of you, it's like healing that inner passion that you have with yourself, a new start, new ideas, new creative, creative spark. With the Ace of Wands bringing in new fiery energy, you can see here, it's almost like you've gotten past some of these webs. There's an orb that's coming in for many of you. And also, like, there's a very uh, community feel with the Ace of Wands here as well with the animal deck. You can see that there are multiple apartments here in the back, multiple windows that are kind of looking out at this the spider here. And spiders, when they cast their web, they have this ability to kind of cast wide, but also very meticulous about where they bring in and also very meticulous about what they want to capture. And I can see that some of you are capturing a lot of light. So we'll see specifically like if this healing um, is with family, with a personal relationship, we'll see where this healing energy is coming in. But I am seeing this fresh start of passion and attraction within healing, which is beautiful to see. With your work and business endeavors, I do see that many of you are very active. Uh, with the Four of Swords reverse, I can see many of you are not getting a lot of rest. So we'll see if that's a good thing or maybe if you need to try and parse back. But I do see that it's a very active time work-wise uh, with the Four of Swords. 
With the two of wands in your personal life, some of you are thinking through paths within your relationships, or maybe you're even considering where you exactly want to go. You can see that there's a lion here, and also there's a male and a female lion. And the female lion seems to be looking out and mapping the path for where she wants to go in her world. With this moon energy here at the top, it's definitely an acknowledgement of the full moon, that moon, it's going to bring some answers by the time the full moon in Virgo actually arrives. So be mindful of that. But I'm also seeing this cardinal energy. So there could be some bold messages that come through from the guides to give you some understanding of where you want to go. Now the hermit card reversed, which is the representation of the full moon in Virgo energy, did come out here within unexpected surprises. So I think this is where you're going to be affected the most here with this full moon and Virgo energy. The unexpected surprises though was also supported by the world. <laughs> so you can see here there's a beautiful bee with a, a lot of good pollination that's happening around it. Some pink flowers. The world is your oyster right now. Anything can happen. And with the Ten of Cups with an elevation of spirit, the world, this fresh start, this traveling energy with the Two of Wands, making a new path very active, I can see for many of you why this Hermit card is reversed. It's like the guides are saying, it's time to step out with this passion. It's time to trust the process. <laughs> it's time to acknowledge that life is good to you and they're starting to align you with the right people. It's beautiful butterflies, beautiful, beautiful energy. Okay, let's get in some clarifying energy. I, I feel like we could just stop there, right? <laughs> but let's get some more details here with Archangel Energies. and see where the guides are taking you with this full moon in Virgo, a little bit more detail into it. Calling and clarifying energies for the Ten of Cups. Calling and clarifying energies for the Ten of Cups within Elevation of Spirit, wow. Okay, so supporting the Ten of Cups within Elevation of Spirit, I am seeing here the Chariot card reversed. I'm seeing the Three of Wands reversed and also the Hermit card upright. So this is telling me that unexpected surprises and also your Elevation of Spirit are very much connected, which is beautiful to see with the Ten of Cups and also the world uh, showing there. With the Chariot card being reversed, the chariot just flew out and right away I did get this Cancerian energy of the past. So some of you could personally know a Cancer or there's this call of like the drive that you had previously. Um, it's like the guides are wanting you to acknowledge what was that past drive that you had emotionally within your family. Like what were the things that motivated you to help your family or motivated you to acknowledge all the feelings of people within your community. What was that? Because there's a certain like willpower and hard work here of the past that is trying to resurface. It's like some of you had these plans for where you wanted to go, but for some reason your courage maybe dwindled a little bit here with the three of wands being reversed. Like maybe you didn't think it was possible or even specifically like this cancer here there were maybe some discussions about where things could go and they just couldn't move uh, in the way that they needed to. It's like there is a stagnation here. There wasn't the willpower to actually elevate in your life like you needed to do some emotional work. Now to get to the Ten of Cups energy with an elevation of spirit, that means you've gone through the Nine of Cups. You've done some personal work already. So I can see that many of you have done that to even have this here with the elevation of spirit with the 10 of cups. You've done that personal work. And so 
through that work, you've probably acknowledged like where you lost some of your drive. And there were, in the reality of it, there were opportunities that were missed because your drive just wasn't there. But the beauty here with the, the hermit is the time that you've been spending alone and you will spend alone this week, you're able to understand how bright your light is here. Like, I don't know if you all can see that butterflies, but with these 10 of cups, you can see the nine of cups, you can see that self work. But once you master the self work of all those nine cups, you have this one bright shining star that's above this, this one cup here in the middle. And so some of you are illuminating that light. And the thing about the hermit is the hermit holds the light. You can see here, this angel, the hermit is to themselves, but when they come out, they hold the light, they shine the light to others. And so some of you are really stepping into this energy of providing encouragement to others through what you've learned, providing some spiritual mentorship through what you've learned. So you have a light here to share with others, perhaps with some um, failures or missed opportunities. And now you're starting to see, you know what? These things that didn't work, that courage that I didn't have, I learned from that. And so now that you've learned from that, you're starting to spend some time alone, but you're not just holding that information for yourself. Your light is actually healing others here, which is really beautiful. Calling and clarifying energy for healing for the full moon in Virgo. These cards are just flying out, butterflies. <laughs> They're just flying out. Okay, so I did get a very romantic vibe here with the Ace of Wands with healing. That is what's wanted to come to the table this week. And I do see here a divine connection here with the King of Swords and also the Queen of Swords. So Ace of Wands is like the spark button, the on button, uh, like a sexual button of the deck. And I can see that there's a high attraction here from this King of Swords in the past, possibly a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius masculine figure, someone who's really intelligent, really sharp, got some good respect and community, maybe even like a public figure of some sort with uh, this masculine being a king in what they do. And also um, with the King of Swords, it's like, you can see that this King of Swords being reversed is almost like looking back at this queen. Uh, but this queen is someone who's always been very sharp. And again, there's no gender within tarot, but there are traits within you. So you could be more masculine or you could be more feminine. But I am seeing with this past energy that's almost looking toward this queen of swords. It's like this queen of swords has always been really um, intelligent. Like he almost feels like he can't keep up with her, <laughs> this king of swords. Like he can't keep up with her intelligence. But the thing is, they both bounce off each other because the queen always feels challenged by the king of swords. Um, and also, um, when the queen of swords does appear within healing, like this could be for some of you that were previously married, or um, perhaps there was like high focus, like you're someone that's really focused on your career and things. The king of swords is very similar in the same way very high communicative person just a really good match because you two can keep pace with each other intelligently but i do see that pace of keeping up with things there is some ego here in the past <laughs> there was definitely some ego and uh i'm actually getting that it was coming from both sides like no one wanted to really back down but with this queen of swords it's bringing in a gentler energy to really acknowledge okay instead of being so hard and harsh within this relationship, start anew, start afresh. Um, and for some of you that are shifting to new relationships, it's like you could have had some ego with someone of the past, even if they're not a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, that was very, very sharp with their tongue, very intelligent, um, but they had some ego. But now you've wised up. 
And as you're wising up, you're welcoming in this new opportunity for love. You have more intelligence with how you move through love, more intelligence with how you actually connect romantically and emotionally. So you're at a new start and a fresh path. And for some of you, you're healing <laughs> within relationships. You're healing how you spoke with each other and there's a new fresh spark. So beautiful, beautiful energy either way. Con and messages from the spiritual guides for work and business endeavors. Supporting the four of swords for the full moon in Virgo. Okay, so supporting the Four of Swords here, we have the Four of Swords, uh, the Three Upright, the Three of Cups Reverse, and I'm also seeing here the Seven of Cups Upright. So very active time with the Four of Swords being reversed. Very, very active time. I do see here that um, there's a need to kind of work through with some coworkers um, like this isn't necessarily a time for celebration. There actually may be some tension within the workplace of how to kind of communicate, how to talk through things. Um, it seems like there's a little bit of disharmony here. The guides are, um, with all of the shifting energy, they are bringing in the Four of Swords upright as well. So it's very active, but they need to be able to connect with you and you need to take some time with yourself before you make a decision with all this fast paced energy. I'm definitely seeing that there's a little bit of confusion because everything is moving so fast and sometimes speed does that. So it's important to make sure that you're taking the time to look over everything and also like don't get into that point of you have so many choices that you feel stuck at work or you have so many choices that you're not exactly sure what to do. Let's just bring in some clarifying energy here for the Three of Cups, Four of Swords, and Seven of Cups Spiritual Guides. I do see that some of you are coming out of your head though, work-wise, with the Eight of Swords here being reversed. So some of you felt a little bit trapped by a work situation. Um, with it being the Eight of Swords, it could be like, maybe you felt trapped by documents or paperwork, or you felt trapped by like how to communicate with these coworkers. I do see you coming out of that here with the Ace of Pentacles. There's gonna be a big offer coming through, like a big offer, um, a fresh start that's actually gonna bring some financial stability here. Uh, but I do see here, it's important to acknowledge those past things that have gotten you to this point with judgment being reversed. It's like, you have to kind of get through some of this tension with either coworkers or maybe some of this paperwork that you're trying to work through. You need to kind of get through that because um, the judgment um, might not look like it's going in your favor as you're working through it, which is why you're coming out of some of that anxiety. Like it looked like it wasn't going in your favor, but it's actually uh, gonna turn in your favor here with the Ace of Pentacles. So active, active work. <laughs> Beautiful energy. Yeah, sometimes you gotta work through those tough moments, butterflies, work through those tough moments. Calling of messages from the spiritual guides for personal life with the two of wands for the full moon in Virgo. Calling of messages for personal life with the two of wands. Hospital visual is coming back with personal life of those beds. Maybe some of you are um, spending time with a loved one who's in a hospital. It 
could be very specific. Or someone who had surgery. Something, there's something there. Um, also, there was an orphanage visual earlier that came through. Okay, so supporting the Two of Wands here, I'm seeing the Page of Wands reversed, the Queen of Pentacles upright, and also the Eight of Pentacles supporting personal life with the Two of Wands. So yeah, there's this moon energy here within personal life where this female lion is almost like looking out into the distance. Like, where does she want to go? Where does she want to take her life? And the king, he's he's here, but it's almost like the, the, the queen, the female lion always dominates. You know, the female lions uh, typically are the, the hunters. The male lions hunt too, but there's a certain power that the female lion has based on where she wants to go. And so for some of you, it's like you, if you are in that feminine energy, or perhaps you have more power within the relationship, there's a um, masculine here waiting for that to be acknowledged, waiting for you to kind of make your choice of where you actually want to take yourself. Um, and it's going to like prove a path for the relationship. I am seeing the page of wands here reverse, and I actually got a child energy very quickly from this. So for some of you, this could be an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius child um, that either is uh, of the past with your relationship. Because that hospital visual came through, for some of you, this could be maybe a pregnancy that did not take. Um, for some of you, with the Queen of Pentacles, right away, I just got like, um, mastering bills with medical like mastering bills within the relationship connected to that hospital visual for others you view that don't have children or have not had a um, child of the past that was maybe born into the aries leo or sagittarius time frame there's an acknowledgement here of there was a past offer there was a past spark here from this kind of masculine energy that's waiting on this feminine there was a past spark and it's like they're waiting like hey i, I gave you this offer <laughs> especially for those of you within relationships like i gave you this offer why didn't you take it kind of thing i see that some of you are really working on yourselves um with this queen of pentacles you are a master of uh money and with the eight of uh pentacles here it's like you're also doing the work where you're the queen of pentacles masters money masters her work masters her career and you're very busy right now in like going back to school and focusing on yourself and connecting with people and community that can really help you learning from others you're trying to master your craft and i think that's where this energy here that actually came through with the opening butterfly affirmation of life is good to me you can see here that there's this butterfly that has all this willpower and there are other people that are kind of wanting to be acknowledged but some of you are really trying to figure out like who should come on this ride with you who should actually take that next step within the journey and that's where this energy of this two of wands is coming you have so much power within you and it's understandable that you're trying to think through as this gracious person who actually matches up to that and so you're just trying to stay in the work and learn all that you can but the guides are kind of nudging you to say with all this queen of pentacles energy and this good work that you're doing think through clearly like is this offer what you want and also be mindful of their time. Like, don't just drag people along if you know you're truly not ready. And for those of you within relationships, this power that you have is valuable. So maybe step into that if you feel like it's not being valued or have an open dialogue about it, about the fact that you're just trying to do the work. You see the love is there that they have, but maybe you just haven't had as much time for it feeling called to just bring in a few clarifiers here yeah the nine of cups a lot of you have been doing that personal work and i 
I mentioned that with the Ten of Cups with an elevation of spirit, many of you, you learned from some of these past things where you didn't have the energy, you felt like you couldn't charge forward. Maybe you missed some opportunities. And so now for some of you, coming off of that elevation of spirit energy, you don't want to miss opportunities now. <laughs> and so you're trying to focus on your health, your work, do everything you can. But there is a, a spark here of the past that's trying to come through in some way. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Butterflies. I just pulled out a few clarifiers, but this is, whew, I don't know what you you all are doing, <laughs> but this is beautiful. Supporting also personal life with the Nine of Cups. I see you all have been doing some self-work. This full moon in Virgo is bringing in some good investment energy with the Four of Pentacles. This Ace of Cups, upright. These are all upright butterflies, all upright. This Ace of Cups is bringing in an overflow of love into your life as you've been saving. I'm seeing Gemini energy with the lover's card, like two people kind of ready to take on the world together. And I'm also seeing the queen of wands. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy, super passionate, super loving. I mean, to see the four of pentacles, some of you are making such good choices and good investments that are benefiting you and your family. Some of you are just really stepping into that. And to see the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, it's like practicality meets the creative side. And some of you just have huge boosts right now that are just bringing in just an overflow of love. I'm also getting like an overflow of, some of you will have options here within love whether it's within partnership options of how you'll be respected <laughs> within your relationship and for those of you that are single the self-work is being acknowledged by others the fact that you're able to really take care of yourself and save properly with the four of pentacles is beautiful to see and it's really bringing in a divine connection here with the lover's card so beautiful energy there butterflies beautiful beautiful energy <laughs> wow the spiritual guides are loving you all this week butterflies they are loving you all this week this is beautiful to see okay clarifying energy for elevation of spirit with the world and also the hermit clarifying energy for the world and the hermit wondering if we would see some tense energy it's all been so good <laughs> so supporting the world and also the hermit card reversed again the spiritual guides are bringing many of you out uh wanting you to step out of your shell um as much as this is virgo hermit energy and i did get in that in the beginning where it's like you're in that virgo energy but you're also being called to step out in into the world and it's beautiful to see there's a lot of opportunity, unexpected opportunity for many of you butterflies. With this hermit card being reversed here, paired with the world, I'm also seeing the dreamer upright, the three of pentacles upright, and I'm also seeing the five of swords. So there's a lot of good positive energy around you. It's a new start with the dreamer. Um, you're really starting to trust yourself trust again here trust when love is invited to take over right actions arise at the right time allow me dear divine to wait patiently until the timing is right let me rest in the unknown until a clear path is shown yeah many of you are allowing yourself to trust your dreams some of that passion that some of you had where you felt like ah nothing's gonna happen nothing's gonna work like the guides are clearly saying this week, it's happening. These tears were not in vain. The world that you saw for yourself was not in vain. These dry days are turning into tears of 
solutions, tears of how to move forward. Life has been so good to you, butterflies. Life has been so good to you. So they're bringing you into this fresh start and unexpected surprises and really asking you to take that leap of faith. With that, I'm also seeing the three of pentacles here. So there's a call here to really make sure you're doing what you really love. The three of pentacles is not without works. It is the definition of works. And so you may be bringing in some other collaborators. Uh, there's a very creative energy that comes with threes and communication, a lot of good imagination. So it's beautiful to see that with the dreamer. And especially with the world card, it's like the more you start to connect with other people to bring in these dreams, the more you start to literally enter into these soul rooms. Networking is what I'm getting. Enter into these rooms where you can start to connect with people that can see your vision. You'll start to really build up that reputation which comes with the Three of Pentacles. Now with this, um, there is an acknowledgement. You're going to have a boost of recognition uh, this week beauty, your ideas, the creative vision and view that you have. And so be mindful of who's around you. And I feel like that's been coming up over the last uh, few weeks to be mindful of who's around you. Make sure you're acknowledging people's motives. But I feel like that's really just a sidebar there. You have a lot of beautiful energy that you've been bringing to the table. So stand in your power butterflies with this world card dreamer and also continue to do that work we saw that within your personal life it's just beautiful okay so to bring in some closing oracles here i'm seeing the sun and stars so you can see this woman she's looking out into the galaxy she has her cat here that's actually looking with her and you can see again those emotions that were flipped that the guides want you to kind of flip to get to where you're going you can see now the moon has flipped the other way here if you're able to see that butterflies it's like to enter into the room flip your emotions a bit and then you'll be able to get to what is maybe more comfortable and also a, a transformation of your emotions. They won't be the same. We talked about that a little bit last week. So with the sun and stars here, um, there's a view and a vision that you have for your life. And many of you are starting to step into that energy, which is beautiful to see. You're just starting to come into alignment with the vision that you had for yourself. <laughs> Despite the tears that you had, you're starting to actually see that, which is beautiful. I'm just going to bring in a few Akashic Records Tarot with our closing oracles. Okay, so I am seeing the Five of Roses reversed and also Caught in the Ruins reversed. So with the Five of Roses reversed, um, if you can see here, there's two children. Um, it gives a very like Six of Cups energy, but it's actually the Five of Roses. But it's two children that are kind of looking through the garden, trying to find things, trying to discover things. And for some of you, it's like, what were some of those childhood things that you dreamed of? What were some of those childhood dreams that you actually were holding on to? And I'm also getting for some relationships, it's like two different people had a view of how they would see them lives, their lives going. The feminine child here is like looking at every single detail, looking deep into the flowers, like a child that's always been fascinated with the details of beauty. While this masculine child is almost like they have this slingshot <laughs> and they're kind of shooting out into the distance. And so some of you might have a masculine that just kind of like shoots stones out into the distance or shoots things out <laughs> without any real expectation because once that stone is cast, you can't really get it back um, while another person is in the beauty. So 
there's kind of this uh, discord that's happening there, but I'm also seeing caught in the ruins reversed. So many of you, again, who had that entrapment, and we saw that energy within work and business endeavors with the eight of swords being reversed, you're coming out of confinement. You're coming out of that restricted energy and you're stepping into a new space. With 16 being here, that translates to seven. So the mystery is over, it's being done, it's being complete. You're starting to step into a truer version of yourself, which is beautiful to see. Now let's just close things out here with a unicorn oracle for the full moon in Virgo taking place March 7th. Closing unicorn oracle for full moon in Virgo. Okay, there are a few that wanted to come out. <laughs> Okay, so we have possibility. It says, raise your standards, elevate your expectations. You have unlimited potential. Yes, butterflies, life has been so good to you all. I can see that across this entire reading. Uh, really step into that possibility. Again, it says possibility, raise your standards, elevate your expectations. You have unlimited potential and you have a beautiful, beautiful unicorn here with kind of these rainbow wings above the clouds and um, that energy definitely came out here within this first butterfly affirmation well it felt like some of you are above the, the clouds but also need to acknowledge the people that you want to take with you and those that have helped you trust this is the third time we've seen trust so there's a high trust acknowledgement here trust leap into the unknown have faith and move forward believe you will fly this unicorn is standing atop a rock on top of a mountain and so some of you to take that leap of faith you need to climb that mountain and just conquer it once you're able to climb it you will be able to leap out with confidence know that the guides have you and then finally here we have growth Oh, we have two unicorns. We have like a mothering unicorn with wings and also a child unicorn. And growth says, seek out a mentor or guide. Take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. So yeah, with each step of growth, there's a need to acknowledge where you need to personally grow and the lessons that you've learned, which we saw with the elevation of spirit supporting that 10 of cups. Beautiful, beautiful energy, butterflies. Beautiful energy. With that, that is all I'm being called to read for you for this full moon in Virgo. I hope you all appreciated the readings for this week ahead. To close things out here, just burning a bit of Palo Santo, sending you off with protective energy. As always, thank you all so, so much for your likes, subscribes, and donations and subscriptions at Monique's Tarot Substack, Medium, Quora, the podcast, YouTube, Chainflix, all of the community spaces. It is such an honor to connect with you all. And I'm wishing you a beautiful, beautiful full moon in Virgo. Until next time, butterflies. Speak soon. Bye.